my name's Colin Guthrie, and God knows if any of you will listen to this, but everybody's different. All gardeners are different, and I'm different in as much as I'm retired, and it's an indulgence. It's a Harley Davidson for me. Uh, to be honest with you, my carrots probably cost a fiver each, but they're really good carrots. So I've spent a lot of money on things. I've spent a lot of money in this polytunnel, if you have a look around here. And I've spent a lot of money on the wood for the raised beds. Um, the west coast of Scotland, uh, on an island called Arran, which is beautiful, surrounded by sea, so it's warmer during the winter. Um, we're on a sort of a south-facing slope, and uh, but it's very wet. So for that reason, I've gone for raised beds. Uh, I have several allies in my um, gardening, and they are seaweed, horse manure, spent hops from the brewery, grass, and uh, put it all together, and I've created all my own soil. I haven't taken soil from anywhere else in Arran because I don't know where you are, but on Arran we have uh, New Zealand flatworms, Himalayan balsam, stuff like that. So. I've avoided taking soil from elsewhere, but I've managed to create in a few years quite a formidable garden. Uh, but as I said at the very beginning, to be honest, I have spent a lot of money and not everybody's got money. And I have to be honest with you, I have the highest regard for people who don't have much money, who create wonderful gardens and per unit area grow a lot better than I do. Uh, but I'm older and I'm in a hurry, so I've spent the money. But there you go. So if you have a look around here, you'll see I've got quite a lot of raised beds. This is uh, a polytunnel. I've got a polytunnel that's 8 metres wide and 18 metres um, long. And uh, I have to say, uh, could you point it at me, Jill? I have to say, if you're thinking of getting a polytunnel, one thing that we didn't factor in, cats. We've got a cat. The cat climbs up the polytunnel. So all the way down the polytunnel, I've got perforations. If you've got a cat, don't get a polytunnel. Uh, something worth looking at in this country um, is made in Shetland uh, or Orkney, and it's called a polycrub, P-O-L-Y-C-R-U-B. I have to say, if I had to start again, I would buy a polycrub. I think it would probably cost three times as much, but you get a polycarbonate shell. Um, it's warmer. Uh, it's easier to heat. You can't really heat a polytunnel, and cats can't climb up it and destroy it. And um, so I go for the polycrub. But there you go. So this is my uh, this is my little haven. And if my assistant Jill, who's my current carer, would like to come outside now, um, I think when we go outside, you'll lose the audio. But have a look up the. But back. Colin, I wanted you to go through all the stuff in the polytunnel that's growing in February because that's what's remarkable. Well, Seriously, you might think it's remarkable, but basically. This is charred, and this is just brought in from the end of last winter as big roots, and uh, these roots are just produced the charred. I think this is cauliflower. Then I've got uh, beetroot here, and um, I got from uh, a heritage seed company called the Real Seed Company a turnip called Petrowski turnip. It's Polish, and they have 100% germination rate. And the, the, you can actually eat the green tops, and of course you can eat the turnip. But the good thing about the Petrowski turnip is when it gets really big, it doesn't lose its flavour like some of the other turnips. And I've got coriander. Colin, when did you plant the Petrowski turnip? When did you plant the Petrowski turnip? Well, probably in autumn. So they've been there for two and a half months over winter. Um, but they're very, very reliable and um, uh, grow very quickly. And I... Um, I really strongly recommend them. And then as we go down here, uh, we've got, um, I've probably overdone the onions and garlic, but here we've got, I think this is it's some brassica. Uh, it's not doing that well, but who knows. And then um, on either side, onions. I've learnt that strawberries too close together uh, in a polytunnel or outside will get infections. It's a bit like having patients in hospital beds close together or fish in a cage close together. So strawberries have to be separated. I read on the internet that in Germany they mix it with uh, garlic, so I'll have a go at that. I also, um, I think one of my main attributes as a gardener is uh, a more than a fair share of what's called obsessive compulsive disorder. And I can happily spend 
believe it or not, in one of these beds, several hours, if you'd like to point this at the soil, please, uh, just happily sifting it through a fine sieve. Probably totally pointless, but it's lovely. Um, and while I'm handling the soil, uh, I'm sure many of you are aware that what I'm actually handling are bacteria. And um, there's a wonderful book called The Hidden Half of Nature. I can't remember the authors now from America. A geologist who's married to a doctor. Basically, soil, 80% of the uh, nitrates in soil comes from dead bacteria, right? And uh, it's quite interesting in this book to draw a parallel between, I'm sure you're aware that the roots of plants... Um, when the plant takes in the energy, over half of the energy the plant takes in photosynthesis is given to other organisms in the soil, such as uh, fungi and bacteria. And the fungi and bacteria reciprocate, and they give the plants certain things that the plant can't make, right? Uh, so, in fact, the bacteria in the soil are assisting in the, in, in, in the growth of the plant, and the plant's helping the bacteria. And uh, it's our duty, if we're going to have good vegetables, to create as diverse an environment as possible in the soil for as many bacteria as possible. Um, and uh, uh, that creates uh, wonderful fertility and, uh, and nitrates. And it's interesting because we wouldn't be here on this planet if it weren't for a bacteria called uh, a nitrate fixing bacteria. I think it's bacteria Rhizobium leguminosarum. I'm not sure. But those night, uh, billions of years ago, they created the nitrates that we have in our bodies. But there's another one, a wonderful parallel here. In our bodies, in our, mostly in our guts, we have five pounds in weight of bacteria. And I'm an ex-GP, um, so I know a bit about this, but there's a thing called the human bionome now, where they're increasingly understanding that bacteria in our bodies are incredibly important. And um, the five pounds in weight of bacteria in our bodies, which is the same weight as our brain, many people think they're more important in the brain, because in the guts, they fight off infection. They assist, I believe, also in detecting, or well, they definitely um, detect bad bacteria and um, uh, interact with the immunological systems in your body to kill the bad bacteria. But in the gut villi, in your gut, lower in your gut, between the sort of villi that are sticking out, there are bacteria in between here, and they assist in the absorption of food and in defense mechanisms. And in connection with the vagus nerve, believe it or not, if you eat properly, then you get a high. The vagus nerve, the 12th nerve, goes up to your brain. So those bacteria are very, very important. Um, and some of those bacteria in there are the same as the bacteria in the soil. So there's a parallel between the roots of plants and the roots of our gut. And it's often the same bacteria that are working in both places. So I always like to think of the soil as being like your insides, right? Uh, sounds ridiculous, but there you are. So that's it. Um, so we've got the bacteria here, our uh, soil here. Um, so when we eat, we're actually eating dead bacteria. And there's the cow. The cow has four stomachs. Uh, it takes in cellulose. It doesn't break down the cellulose. It's the bacteria in the stomachs of the cow. It regurgitates, and then it eats the dead bacteria. And then we eat the cheese, egg, milk, and butter the cow produces uh, from the dead bacteria. So we have to be careful with bacteria. Bacteria are wonderful. Um, and so uh, take-home message from that is don't take antibiotics because they kill your gut bacteria. And here's another startling fact. I was taught at medical school that the appendix was a vestigial organ and the appendix was, was not necessary for anything, but it is. The appendix is where the gut bacteria that you have go to when you have a bad gut infection. They hide in the appendix and then they come out afterwards. Um, so there you are. Uh, coming up, moving on here, got some early potatoes in, onions, mulch juice. Um, this is perhaps one of the most wonderful vegetables called kale. I'm sure you're all familiar with it. Kale is, is a great plant. Got a lot of that coming through. And here I have an astoundingly beautiful asparagus bed. I have been tempted to put a set of snooker balls or billiard balls on it, 
because it, it's just perfect. I have spent hours in this bed, and if you look carefully, you'll see the asparagus just coming through here. And I'm going to have a feast of asparagus pretty soon, I think, in a few weeks. Uh, broad beans, I think they've been hit by the frost a bit. Onions, and then over here, uh, um, I'm just uh, planting my soil blocks. Um, soil blockers um, inside, I think, are quite a good idea. So what you do is you use one of these in uh, compost, create blocks, and then they have little dimples on the top and I'm planting various things in them. And that means that the, you get the roots going out into the air. And that means when it grows, even with, even with uh, plants uh, like Florence fennel, where you can't transplant, you'll be able to grow a Florence fennel plant in that and then take it outside and plant it outside. So I'm really quite, this is the first time I've done it. And I'm using a bed of soil underneath um, and I'm going to water it all. And I think I should, well, I calculate that it's a row of 17. I reckon I can get 30 rows in. So 30 times 700, there'll be about 600 plants in there. That's quite good. And then the standard seed bed over here and uh, so that's about it um now of course it was um no, vernon i've forgotten his name now but the guy who championed soil blockers i, I think they're really good you get them for about 20 quid there uh that's a five centimeter one and uh, mix it with a bit of vermiculite which is good stuff and uh, off you go so um that's just for starters you know